Okay, this is the same situation as in part A, but now we are going to be considering non-conservative forces like friction and air resistance. So before we saw that the block had a speed of 26.8, I think it was, uh, meters per second, and now we're seeing that the, the speed is less. It's only 24 meters per second by the time it gets there, and that's because of those non-conservative forces. So we're going to call our initial to be up here at point A, and our final is going to be down here at point C, and I'll label that. Okay, so we're going to be solving for the work done. So that symbol is W sub NC. That's a capital W, so you don't confuse it with weight. The non-conservative forces are removing energy from the system, and so we expect it to have a negative answer, and we know the units of work in SI system are joules. All right, so now let's look at our plan. Oh, and I did not draw in my gravitational potential energy reference line. So I'll go ahead and put that in now. That's where H equals zero. So we have our conservation of mechanical energy equation here, all seven terms, just like on your equation sheet at the beginning. Yes, there is going to be gravitational potential energy. There's no spring potential energy initial because there's no springs. There's no kinetic energy initial because it starts from rest at point A. There is going to be work by non-conservative forces. That's what we're trying to solve. The gravitational potential energy reference line goes right through point C. So there's no gravitational potential energy, no spring potential energy because there are no springs. And there will be kinetic energy. We know it's going 24 meters per second. So now we go ahead and execute our plan. We take our three terms, MGHA plus the work by non-conservative forces equals one-half mvc squared. So I'm not using i's and f's here, just like in the last part where we did part a. I'm using a, b, or c, in this case a for initial and c for final, because it matches up to the diagram. If you use initial and final here, that's fine, as long as you keep it straight. It was a little more tricky in part a of this problem where we were also finding out something about point b. But in this case, we can see that we're not going to be able to divide through by the mass. Some people might be tempted to, to cross those out because they see mass on both sides. But remember, you're not just crossing it out. You're dividing every term by the same thing. And there's no mass in this work term, so we don't want to do that. The work is going to be equal to 1 half mvc squared minus mgha. And so now... We can go ahead and plug in the numbers here, 1 half times 10 kilograms. We weren't given a mass in part A but because we didn't need it, but in this case we are given a mass and we do need it. It was going 24 meters per second when it got to the bottom, uh, minus 10 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times a height of 36 meters, so the work by non-conservative forces. Now it's just a matter of plugging this into my calculator. 0. 0.5 times 10 times 24 squared minus, I'm just putting this all in at once, minus 10 times 9.8 times 36. If you like to do it in two parts and write down the individual parts, that's fine. But I am confident that I can put this all into my calculator at once. I got negative 648 and I wrote down joules, but let's just check that. Okay, that's part of what we're supposed to do anything. Anyway, does the answer have the correct units? In this first part, we had kilogram and then meter per second squared. So that's meter squared per second squared because it's squared is outside, so we're going to square the units. Is that equivalent to a joule? Well, we can say that that is the same as a kilogram meter per second squared times a meter. See what I did? I just took the meter squared and I wrote it as meters times meters, like that. And then I know that this part right here is a newton, so newton meters. And let's see, I'm going a little off track here. There we go. And then this leads to a joule. Okay, so this is my unit analysis right here to show that indeed we do get from here two units of joules. And then this is the same thing here, kilogram meters squared per second squared. 
All right, so the units are correct. Sign of the answer, we expected it to come out negative, and it did because friction and air resistance are removing energy from the system. Is the solution complete? Yeah, that's all we were supposed to find, just that one thing. Is the magnitude of the answer reasonable? I have no idea. Um, it's really hard to tell on this one. I don't have a feel for how many joules of energy it should have been. It's just a, that's a tough thing to, uh, so I'll just leave that blank. Say I, I'm not really sure. Some things you'll have a, a good feel for. Most of the time we have a pretty good idea. Here we don't have anything to compare it to. If we redid this, like let's say we were told that at point B it was instead of going, I think it was 19.8 meters per second, we were told it was 19, and then we found out how much work was done by non-conservative forces between points A and B, we would expect that answer to come out to be smaller than 648. We would have some comparison. But here I think we're I think we've done the best we can.